there you go. All right, welcome back to the Labrador Energy Podcast. Today we got Carl, uh, who's here in Berlin as well, just uh, in quarantine. Yeah, hi. Uh, as you can see, there's a lot of light coming from the window. Very nice and, outside, uh, yeah. Yeah, but I, it's not like I'm going to find out today. I mean, it's okay, man. We'll, get, we'll try to go out a bit. I went out this morning, to be honest. I went to Uniqlo and I bought a pair of pants. Wait, Uniqlo is open? It's open, bro. Today they open. So, for example, uh, if you go to Eastside Gallery Mall, a lot of the shops have started to reopen. Like, a lot of the, like the big Uniqlo is massive, you know? And then there are like two, three people running around. And, uh, yeah, I got some pants, a shirt. Just, uh, you know, it's good to buy some stuff. Oh, no, wait. Of... Oh, no, wait. I, I was last time on... Um... Alexander Platz because I bought these headphones and okay. I went to Media Mart. So I ordered them online and I went mm -hmm. to pick them up on Media Mart just to be out. Right. And I've been doing I've been doing like this series of TikToks mm -hmm. where I go to like public spaces and I scream echo. Oh really? Just to yeah. Does it is there um, an actual echo? It is it is an echo. Like on Alexander Platz it is an echo. I didn't upload a video because there was there was police there and I had like to not do it. But I did. I do. I do do that now, even outside of the camera and stuff. Like I just uh, practice by screaming echo on places where you like usually couldn't hear your own voice because it was so full of people. But it was strange to be like outside or to be like people don't know how to how to act on 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 shops anymore. Like right. not only on 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 like on a place like Media Mark or on a place like Rebe. People really don't know how to act around other people. Like you come across other people and you're like, they're trying to like avoid, but do they have masks? <laughs> Cause like, for example, now, uh, you know, there's since Monday, there's been like uh, I think it's an ordinance or like a guidance that everybody on public transportation needs to wear a mask, right? In Berlin, right. In Berlin, yeah. it's not as enforced as it, it is in, in Cologne, in Cologne, for instance, it, there, there's like a, it's like a fee of 150 euros if you don't wear your mask. Yeah. yeah I saw that as well. Right. So I was thinking, I was thinking maybe they'll implement it here as well, but I think Berlin is too way too liberal to kind of put that in, right? You know, Berlin is Berlin. Man. Berlin, yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say so. Uh, for then, those, go ahead. How how are you gonna do that with homeless people, for instance? Yeah, you can't really. Man. Yeah, they can't. Uh, it's true. You know, what are you gonna do? Find them? You're gonna what? Send them the bill to their home address? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like <laughs> what are you gonna do exactly? Like Neukölln no Station, <laughs> PO box. All right, I'm happy to see that you have already worked on those bits. That's great. I mean, I worked a bit. Uh, okay, let's kind of, before we kind of go into the bits, like, can you give a quick introduction of yourself? Where are you from? What do you do? All right, uh, I'm Carl. I, uh, I used to be a filmmaker. I'm still a filmmaker, but now I'm a stand-up comedian since uh, a year and a couple of change mm -hmm. here in the Berlin stand-up comedy scene. Um, my subjects are sexuality, mental health, and... Uh, a little bit about the Colombian experience as an expat. Because um, you are Colombian. I am from Colombia, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I don't identify myself as a Latino because mm -hmm. I think it's a bullshit term to, to go around. Uh, I, I think it's the N word of Latin America. Latino, like you reckon? Uh, I, well, you know, it's a, it's a term that was created in the United States to simpli uh -huh. simplify the fact that they don't want to like worry about cultures that come from south of the border right so when they put together like mexicans and hondurans and guatemalans and nicaraguans mm. and panamanians in the same box with people from south america there's gonna be like right, right, right. shock and then you know there's now this whole latino culture and for me the capital of latin america is miami and mm -hmm. right miami. okay that could be a good joke yeah <laughs> yeah I hate Miami. I don't right. know. It's just like everything that is wrong about the United States. Right. Uh, blame upon people from South and Central America. So you so basically the Latino word is an oversimplification of the whole kind of or, or the whole kind of cultures uh, that are in South America and Central America. Look, if you want to oversimplify me, you can call me Caribbean, which is, right. which is not it's, it's accurate because I come from the Caribbean part of Colombia mm -hmm. and I identify more with the Caribbean culture, which has a lot of African, European, right, right, right. And indigenous uh, mixed into it. So if you want to like homogenize it, like I'm fine right, right. with Caribbean, but even South American and Central American is complicated because it's usually like 
uh, Aboriginal cultures that got raped and robbed and right. whitewashed and then just like, oh, you guys are so lucky and so happy and so you guys are Latino. Right, and, right, right. You know, I know a lot of a lot of like <laughs> a lot of emo kids from Mexico. <laughs> okay. I, I know a lot of goth people from Guatemala. So not, that are not, not that happy go lucky, yeah? No, no, a lot of not a lot of uh, neurotic people. Like I'm, I'm kind of like, if you go to my Instagram page, I describe myself as. What's your Instagram page? Coffee. Plug everything in. It's comedy. It's like comedy, but with Carl. So. Okay, so K R uh, L M E D Y. Yes. Okay. That's my that's my handler on Instagram, and I go by the neurotic from the tropic. I try to post more on stories than I do on my grid, so people don't have to like. Right, 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 right. Scroll, scroll around so I refresh the content and sometimes I do like um, either photo essays or mm -hmm. I just put something on my Instagram TV like I like to curate my Instagram in a way that people get either frustrated or they stay with me because they find like oh this guy just changes his Instagram all the time right okay so, so a lot of so you, you're not using Instagram as it was intended you're trying to switch it up yeah, yeah, I'm trying to uh, capitalize more on the stories, like, right? Because the stories, the stories are like the original uh, Snapchat that mm -hmm. disappeared in 24 hours. So it's a bit of a. It's, great. Bit. it's something that if people want to like uh, make viral, they have to make snapshots or, or they have to work it themselves. So, so you really know which which content is valuable that if they actually go for the effort. If you if you actually like switch from a. Uh, from a personal Instagram to a business mm -hmm. Instagram, you can actually control all those uh, statistics. Right. Okay. That happen, which people like get involved with your right with your stories. What they do with your stories, if they share them, mm -hmm. uh, what kind of traction does it get with people who, that do not follow you? Right. If uh, some people discover you or something like that. And my numbers are low, but I'm. I mean, it's about putting out content, trying it out, right? Like experimenting with it. And I was going to say, I just noticed you got a new tattoo recently, huh? Yeah. Um, I miss stand-up comedy. So okay. I did the, a little microphone, uh, yeah? Mic stand yeah. little wire. And if you see the cable had an interruption there, okay. which is uh, March of 2020 for me. Ah, okay, okay. That's an interesting little, uh, little kind of detail. Yeah. So okay. I'm, I'm planning on having a, a, a bit of a longer career. To kind of immortalize it as a, immortalize it as a, as a, let me immortalize the pandemic. Okay. That's pretty cool. And, and it is a pink uh, stand-up mic, which has to do with uh, the subjects that I, I want to explore more and more. Okay. Let's talk about that. What kind of subjects do you actually talk about in your comedy for those of us that don't know? Well, at the beginning, I, uh, threw the material around on what people knew about uh, Colombia and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I was factoring into uh, the ignorance of the public being ignorant myself. Mm -hmm. And uh, that wasn't getting any traction. So I started to be myself more on stage as, as much as stand up helped me to like actually discover myself. So I realized that I'm a pansexual individual that I'm not like, as straight as I always wanted to be. Um, I come from a marriage. My marriage uh, broke off because I was keeping his personality down. So I started talking on my stand up about, you know, the things that I did in secret. Okay. I was straight, like going into glory holes. And right. Okay. Like, like we, be, being weird around uh, uh, people of, uh, different sexual orientations because I was like, hey, no homo, but mm -hmm. at the same time going like, oh no, you, you're gay. Okay. You're pretty much gay. You, you just have to accept it and, and, and live a better life or, and, or not live like a constraint. Bent up. So, so when, you, when did you kind of realize, came to this realization? Like, was it actually in the marriage or after the marriage was ended? Uh, after the marriage was en uh, ended. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and I went through a depression and I went through a time where I was just working a lot mm -hmm. and not going to my to my apartment in Leipzig a lot. Like my my career as a camera assistant for mm -hmm. films takes me all around Germany. So every time that I was all around Germany, I was having like secret encounters with people or 
going to sex parties. Was this on like when you say secret or secret secret encounters? Was this like with women, with men? Was it on Grinder? Was it on Tinder? It was it was all over the place. Was okay, like, I'm gonna date I'm gonna date a woman today, mm-hmm. and then it would be like, yeah, I'm going to date this gay bar and just have like uh, kiss a guy or just uh, give a hand job to somebody or right, just, right, right. Like, Sock a cock in, in secret, uh, or have my cock sock in a glory hole, or something like that. Right, right, right. Um, and that takes a toll on you. Like you start to like clamp things mm. inside. Like that took a toll on me. That, that it took like time for me to like realize that Berlin was the perfect environment for me to just be myself. Right. Okay. Hide anything, and I met a lot of kind people who mm-hmm. showed me like, uh, hey, we we do the same and we have a family or we just have a business and we're open and, and the, we're dynamics, happy. the dynamics of the relationships are a bit more different than these and their relationships right of course because uh i'm i'm, I'm i am very gay but mm-hmm. the fact of the matter is i do know and do, do not enjoy the uh, stylistics of uh, gay relationships between men because, and i and i love women Mm-hmm. I like not women be, well women in all the senses like even trans women or right, right, right. trans women, women that become men um, basically I like uh, something that's called AF uh, assigned female at birth AFA is what okay. they call them in the, in the LGBTQ thing it's, it's a lot of uh, so, bas- uh, so uh, hetero women, women is that what you would I have I haven't been dating a lot of hetero women. Okay. Uh, Wait, so what's the honest. difference between alpha and hetero women? Well, assigned female at birth is uh, somebody who was assigned this uh, gender at birth and are comfortable mm-hmm. with that gender. Right. Uh, uh, alpha hetero women are women that prefer somebody of the opposite assigned gender at okay. birth and identify more with uh, the idea that culture gives you about what uh, a hetero man or a right. sign, a, a masculine at birth uh, should be. Whereas in the queer community, you can have a penis and be a woman. Right, okay. Or you can have a vulva and be a man. But like the you know, assigned uh, female at birth, does she prefer other assigned female at birth? Does she prefer well, more open? That could that could be also a thing. That could be like right. a lesbian that is a assigned female at birth and she only prefers a assigned female at birth. I mean, uh, the great thing about the whole queer community in Berlin is that it got me really active into mm-hmm. my own sexuality, mm-hmm. and uh, it made me realize like, oh, now I can like go into a date and talk to somebody and tell them, oh, I'm I'm into this, I'm into this, I'm into this, which. For somebody who's just into like, all right, let's meet. I like you. You like me. Let's just fuck. Right, right, right. It can be intimidating to sit down and go like, well, uh, I am a switch, which means that I can be either dominant or submissive. Right. I like rope. rope but I like being a this, this, and this. And I am a bratty sob, but I'm also a dumb that likes bratty sobs. And you know, what's a bloody sob? Yeah, yeah. Bratty. What's a bratty sub? Okay. What's a bratty sub? <laughs> a bratty sub is somebody who likes doms but plays with the rules around. Okay. Like, you know, like somebody who goes like, "Oh, I know I'm not supposed to do this, but I'm gonna do it anyway." And like, right. Okay. Likes to be disciplined because of that. Right. Okay. Sounds like is there like a manual to kind of go for all this stuff? Because I again, like for me, it's kind of confusing. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> There's a, there, yeah, there's, there's manuals. It's like Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, yeah exactly. What's what's the dragon? What's the wizard? Oh, exactly. What's the what's the hitting points? What's the what's the yeah? That's the hit points. Yeah, yeah. Charisma. Yeah. <laughs> Does a brandy sub have more charisma than like a like a dominant? I don't know. Oh um, yeah. Well, uh, as a dominant, you have to have more charisma. <laughs> okay. 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 That's, I think. About this, yeah. I think it'd be interesting to kind of get like every, everyone who moves to Berlin, they get the manual. There you go. This it is. Read it. You know, no, you know what was the thing? The thing is that before all this in Berlin, I was a big voyeur. Like I used to go in Bogota to places where you could just watch. You could go into a cabin and watch other people do things and okay. surveyors or do whatever you want. Where, where is that? So, in Mexico? Or? 
No, in Bogota, in Colombia. Okay. So there's, places, there. so there's places in Bogota where you can just go and watch other people fuck? Is that what you're saying? This is, this is before the time uh, where the internet was like open for everybody in Colombia. Mm -hmm. There was like uh, times where in internet was really restrictive. Right. So if you wanted to watch porn, you, you had to go to display with cubicles. And oh, like okay. uh, these kinds of alternative sexualities in Colombia were treated as, as a cubicle or a dark thing. Right. Uh, gay bars, uh, right. meetup places, glory holes. But they're not outlawed or anything. They're not illegal. No, not at all. Right. They were just like, all right, if you want to be a pervert, you can just be a pervert. In Go here. Area. Okay. This is designated live, pervert space. Exactly. Leave the gap fearing people to the side. Right, right, right. You know, because uh, Colombia is a very Christian Catholic. It's a lot of. I, I was actually going to do a bit about how, like, you know, notice how, like, uh, uh, there's difference between different kinds of Christianity. You have ones that are like, you know, God-loving people, and then there's God-fearing people, you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, Colombia is a God-fearing fearing people, right. I can say. Yeah. Um, and, you, and you get it from many, like, you get it from many positions. Like, for instance, I come from a very Christian Pentecostal family. My mm -hmm. mom is a pastor. Right. Uh, she's very Christian. Like her favorite ice cream flavor is homophobia. Okay. <laughs> that is, is that, is that, a, is that, what's the color of that ice cream? Is it pink? Uh, yeah. It's a, uh, it's a pink triangle thing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, uh, and when you come to, for such recessive, uh, re like, um, reclusive places where your sexuality has to be pushed to the back mm -hmm. and, uh, also, like economical cultures where you cannot aspire to have your own place where you can like uh, right. stretch your sexual muscle to your own capacities until you're about 35 or something like that. Then you have a culture of motels, right? Okay, uh, fl flea back hotels, right? Cabins and places where you go. Yeah, yeah. So, I uh, uh, because I come from a really like Christian family, I wouldn't just like take a part like an active part mm -hmm. of the sexual act but um i had the opportunity to just watch okay and just fantasize about the things that i would like to do is there is there like an entrance yeah. fee to this place or like you just go in there hey, oh, yeah, 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 okay. yeah yeah it was like five thousand pesos which would be like one and a half euros oh okay that's not too bad that's very affordable yeah yeah okay. yeah. yeah no like i say like the for me, coming from Bogota to a place like Leipzig, where homosexuals are just homosexuals and not like this bendy kind of masculinity that we have in Colombia. Right, so, okay. Well, yeah, I like women, but I like to wear women's clothes or I like to like kiss guys or do something like that. And then land in Leipzig where it's like this like musk, smelly, uh, Manly looking Camp Davy wearing guys right. sucking cock on glory halls. And right, 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 right. Like going straight to anal and stuff like that. Right. That was for me like a shock. Like, I, you mean to tell me that we're more advanced in Colombia? I don't know. So, uh, yeah, for, for me to go through that, like this open sexuality, open mm -hmm. in certain places, sexuality right. in Colombia and then coming to this like, no, here you're either a man who likes mm. cock or a woman who likes vulva or you're straight. And right. then coming to Berlin is like, do whatever the fuck you want. So Leipzig is a lot more defined than that. Okay, interesting. But it, I'm, I, I, mean, think, I find it quite fascinating that Colombia, I, I would thought, I thought Colombia would be a lot more kind of restrictive in terms of like, you know, you said like there's a lot more flexibility and, you know, man can wear a dress and it's like, oh, okay, he's just, Oh man, in the Caribbean, in the Caribbean where I come from, it's like uh, every, so you're, you're on an island. Where, where do you come from? Bogota is not an island. I'm, right? I'm is... in the coast. No, no, no. Okay, the coast. The okay. Coast. Yeah, uh, it's a place called Barranquilla, which is okay. between two very. Uh, oh, Barranquilla is a place where Shakira comes from. Okay. That's actually part of my act. It's like uh, I'm from Colombia, which is the birthplace of Shakira and cocaine. Mm. And that seems to like uh, people really love that because. They do know Shakira and they know cocaine. And they're racist. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> so you print this binary yeah. thought and people just like, yeah, 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 yeah. two things that I know. Yeah, they can recognize. Sometimes it's just as easy as recognition, right? It's recognition, yeah. yeah. I've, I've got people on stage going like, fuck Shakira, we love cocaine. Okay. <laughs> that is, yes. Uh, my fan. thoughts exactly. No, I have a story about Shakira because we uh, used to go to Catholic schools. Shakira okay. and I. She used to go to an all women Catholic school and there was a mass that uh, took place like once a year between all the Catholic schools. Right. And, uh, and then every year, the priests would just go like, and now singing Ave Maria for all of you, here it is, Shakira. Oh, would they and call her Shakira back then? Her name they... is Shakira Mebara. Mebara. Oh, so that's, that's, that's her actual name. Okay. It's not a name. stage name. Right, that's right. her name. No. So did you see name. her perform or? Yeah, but everybody, once they say, like, and now performing Ave Maria, here, right. Shakira, remember, I, it was like, oh, not Shakira. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. And, and the fact is that most of the people that went to school, to that school, or most of the people that were like, oh, fucking Shakira, are now either in jail or in loveless marriages. Right. And Shakira owns half of my city, so. <laughs> really? She bought a lot of property? She bought a lot of property. She has a lot of buildings there. She's kind of turning uh, Barranquilla into some kind of like low level Miami. Ah, like, like touristy. Things. Okay. Well, white buildings with like green uh, windows. Green right. Okay. Windows. Right. I've never been yeah. to Miami, so I don't know the green tinted windows. But it seems yeah, like. No, you know, not missing anything. Okay. Well, if you like, if you like to party and just like. I mean, I. I around. I'd rather prefer I'd rather like spend my evenings in a comedy club than like in a you know in a club club. I I was in a comedy club in Miami and it was uh it was great, but it was just like a open comedy night. And it was a lot of comedians I never heard of. Were they any good? But, uh, of course, man. I mean, even low level comedians in Florida tour around the United right. States and touring around the the United States. I bet builds a lot of chops because you right. end up going to like the Bible Belt where right, right, right. the crowds are fucking impossible. Right. And you get booked. Even if you're bad, you get booked because there's a lot of comedy. Places. There. Right. They just want yeah. to have like, okay, interesting. Yeah. Maybe that's an interesting guess because I was just listening to a podcast from Daniel Sloss where he was saying that he was doing some religious jokes in, uh, I think it was Indiana and some guy showed him his gun. Um, because they are pretty you, lit. You, you build that kind of chops. Like right, either okay. you build, build bridges with the audience or, or you tell them to fuck off. Mm. And those things, like you, as you know, they build like either thicker skin. Right, right, things right. that are important for comedians. Like yeah, of course, of course. Go, you need to be able to kind of brush stuff up, right? So, oh man, I mean, it's my first year. And uh, in my first year, I've done my cocaine joke once to a very angry audience member from Colombia. Right. And this person wouldn't let me finish the joke. Mm. And uh, I could have just like put her down. Right. But since I'm a Colombian, I saw the pain. So I just like let her speak her truth and then right. just like side with the audience and the fact. What was the, what was the issue with, uh, with the joke? This was a comic cafe, you know, at the comic cafe. Well, uh, she felt like she had enough that people only talk about cocaine when they talk about Colombia. So I think right. the issue was Colombia. And I, I can see that. I can right, see right, that right. because it's something that they hammer into us in Colombia, like this shameful thing, sh sh shameful thing about cocaine. Mm. Uh, I don't have that. I don't have that. I come, like my, my dad was involved in the cocaine trade in the 70s. Okay. And he got killed in a stupid like situation with some drug lords right okay and we didn't find out that he was dead until like four years later because this fucking stupid drug lord hit his body and never told us where they bury him because they bury him like in a comp like imagine he was in a party in a place where there's a lot of uh, cocaine business done. right um and somebody starts shooting a gun in the air and he gets killed right so these people are like, fuck that. We're going to like uh, get rid of the evidence. Away. Yeah. Well, that's I'm sorry yeah. to hear that, man. I was, uh, that's fucked up. I mean, it's crazy to like, you know, you, you watch all these narcos on TV and stuff. And then 
you know, growing up, you were yeah, there. Right? Glorifying that culture, like that's, yeah. that's fucked up. Uh, but at the same time, it did give an opportunity to many families to experience what it is mm. to build capital. This were, in my opinion, these were the entrepreneurs of that time. The cocaine dealers? These were people who saw a window into a market and they went all in. Right. The problem is uh, my people, the Colombian people, are mm -hmm. hot-headed. Mm -hmm. And, you know, now it's getting more um, corporate and cocaine money has sipped into, like, politics. Right, 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 right. So it's kind of it's getting washed, basically. It's getting washed, yeah. Well... It's it's becoming like a like an under um, like an under culture that's supporting the main uh, right. It gets. I mean, you've seen like all these kind of like uh, narcos and like you know all these kind of guys that uh, the series you see just the the amount of money right, just the 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 billions kind of involved with it. So it's, it's difficult for it not it to is, kind of seep into day day life, right? This is a uh, this is. It's like narcos and all these series are just like dramatization mm -hmm. of something that most people in Colombia has have either directly or indir indirectly like, dealt with. Seen, dealt with, yeah. Like right. suddenly you live in a in a poor neighborhood, and then all of a sudden um, you have a lot of like ramshacked houses, mm -hmm. and then like a fountain made out of marble in the middle of your square. Right. And it's like, what happened here? Oh, no, you remember Pablito? Uh, well, Pablito just made a lot of money and he gave the neighborhood this. Right. Or this beautiful football field or this. And it's right. Like, oh, all right. So there's richness. In, in, in my town in Barranquilla, for instance, in the seven, end of the 70s, beginning of, beginning of the 80s, there was a whole neighborhood where you could see just houses built with marble. Right, okay. You know? granite like all right. these expensive things like with like four or five different uh, architecture styles right. put into each other it was like somebody with who didn't have a lot of money and then suddenly they get a lot of money and they go like oh yeah and those roman columns and they oh right, right. they just like combined all of all that kind of uh, no depth in terms of like architectural knowledge but a lot of money it's like i want that i want that i want lions I want Roman columns. I, I want like, yes. Yeah, yeah, kind of exactly. stuff. Exactly. And then, and then, like from the middle of the eighties onwards, you have like these architectures that are like bunker style. Right. Houses, houses with no windows on the front, right. just like a big wall. Right. And then, like, like, like twenty meters of garden, mm -hmm. and then a house. Right. And more like villa you know, style. Well, no, because these people were getting shot down because uh, ah. other people came to claim the territory. Right. And, you know, in Colombia, all the houses have, like, windows on the front. So right, right, right. you might have, like, a bathroom there. Right. So what they did was they bought more space and they built, like, a bunker, right. garden, and then the house. Just right. in case somebody shot, they right, would right, just right, shoot, right. like, garden or shit. Wow, that's pretty intense. Can you still yeah. hear me? I was gonna say so. What were you? A lot of shooting. Were you doing? Were you doing a lot of? Were you doing a lot of filming in Colombia? Were you also working as a filmmaker there? When I graduated from university, I graduated as a journalist, and mm -hmm. my first job was with a German journalist to go into the peace processes with the paramilitars. Okay. Which made me realize that I didn't want to be a journalist, so I started working on a telenovela in the wardrobe department okay and when i went back to the wardrobe department i realized that i remember that my mom used to work on television as mm -hmm. a as a makeup artist okay and i remember growing up on set because my mom took me away from my dad just to mm -hmm. like get me away from the whole yeah the crazy family right and and I fell in love immediately with the set. And I was like in the lower position in the, in the wardrobe depa department. But right. then I started just like changing departments. And this was around 2007. Right, okay. So I didn't, I didn't, 
I didn't graduate as a filmmaker or as a, you know, in, in, in film school. I graduated in uh, journalism. Right. And I just realized I didn't want to be a journalist. That, and then I ended up working on film. And I, I love film ever since then. Like, I started reading a lot about film. I started mm. doing, like, seminars and uh, screenwriting and stuff. And I ended up working at uh, Fox uh, before it was bought by Disney. Was it like a um, Colombian Fox or like Fox where? It was Fox Studios, uh, Fox Telecolombia. It was what okay. it was called. And they used to do a lot of things for, for FX Latin America. And right. we, we actually did a series for Hollywood called Mental, which was just one season that okay. ran on Fox, Fox International. Right. I got to see David Carradine. It, that was the only like big actor that I ever saw. He came life. over, or how did you guys? Uh, how did you guys see him? Uh, he, he he did two episodes of that. Thing. So he was there shortly. Mental. Oh, okay. So, mental. Yeah, I was gonna say. Uh, well, I was just doing a quick Google to see if I could find it. Maybe. Yeah. Mental David Carradine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll look at it in a, in a bit. I just put it in here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty awesome, and, man. Yeah, and then you know, working at that place, it was working like eighteen hours. So I I got to do a TV movie for a series called Burn Notice. I don't know if you heard. Oh yeah, that. I've heard of Burn Notice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I think it was meet, uh, quite quite a well received, right? It was well uh, well reviewed or something. I I definitely have heard of the name. It was really good. I get. I had to meet. Uh, oh, what's his fucking name? I, I forgot his name. Uh, he was on uh, um, the Evil Dead. He was Ash on the Evil Dead. Uh, Bruce Campbell. Okay. Bruce, Bruce Campbell was a, uh, a fucking asshole to us all to us all the time. I can say that now because the statue of limitation has run down. But that How, guy was a fucking asshole. Why was he an asshole? Oh my God, he was having such a bad time because he was supposed to do like a, like a nude scene on that show, on that, mm-hmm. on that, on that film. And he was being like, he, he was starving to death. So he was still always like, uh, what's happening with my trailer? What, like always complaining, like, like star complaining. Mm-hmm. And we used to go to him like, um, my friend Alex and I, my mm-hmm. friend Alex was in the... Um, I was in the art department and I was a transport coordinator. That meant that everything with wheels on right. that production, like cars in front of the camera and the vehicles that transported the whole team were my responsibility. Um, and we were both like big fans of uh, Evil Dead. Right. Uh, and we go, uh, we go to like Bruce Campbell, like Mr. Campbell, we're big fans like ash forever and we start doing like the ash thing from evil dead and he was like oh yeah great and then he turns to the to the producer and he's like i don't want to see that kind of shit happening on set like, really what a fucking asshole to like well, and, and in your face i mean you guys just the, there. Sad, the sad part the sad part is that we had like a dvd for the evil dead and we wanted him to sign it and we just like fuck this guy gave up yeah so, so as soon as uh, like uh, one of the <laughs> one of the wardrobe girls goes into the trailer, and he was supposed to wear whites, like navy right. whites, right? And he took the navy whites off, and uh, his pants had like a big shit stain because Bruce Campbell doesn't wear underwear, you know? Why is that? What the fuck? <laughs> uh, and the 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 wardrobe ladies were like, "Hey, you know, this is why." you might want to wear some underwear with this. And they were like, no. So because he was such an asshole, somebody leaked to the press that fact. Right. That fact like that Bruce Campbell shat on his pants. And I mean, have some <laughs> understanding for, for the guy. The guy was just eating like rice and beans. He wasn't right, 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 right. just like rice and beans. So he was going to be like doing himself. some sharp stuff, you know, like. <laughs> wow, that's pretty intense. Start, yeah. So people hated him so much that they leaked that story to the press. So Why did he not wear underwear? Is it just like his thing? 
Bruce Campbell doesn't wear underwear, man. <laughs> he goes commando all the time. What the fuck? Okay. You heard, you heard it here first. Okay, interesting. Oh. Is he still famous now, Bruce Campbell, or what's he, what's he doing now? Yes, he is. He did like a series. Uh, Bruce Campbell. Oh, he's pretty... If you're listening to this, um, I love you, man. He's pretty old, yeah? He's like 61. Ash forever. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's got, quite a, he's got quite a strong jawline, this guy. Yeah, and he works with Sam, uh, uh, Sam Raimi. Uh, every time that Sam Raimi does a movie, he's in there. Like, he's in all the Spider-Mans that Sam Raimi directed. Yeah, he did, he did a series. He was on, uh, I think he was on Hercules or Sheena, the Warrior Princess. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. I mean, he seems like one of these guys that kind of, you know, has like one of those like heroic kind of faces or like action He's got a great voice, man. He's an amazing performer. He brings it on. He's like, every time that you were on set and you saw him, he brought it on. Like, who, you know who else was in that TV movie? Uh, it was uh, Pedro Pascal. Oh, Pedro Pascal, the guy that was in uh, Game of Thrones and Mandalorian, right? The Mandalorian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, who don't know? Maybe, maybe the secret to all this good acting is not wearing underwear. No, well... <laughs> I don't, know. I don't know if Pedro, I think Pedro did wear uh, underwear. Okay. Pedro was pretty nice. We flirted a lot, and that got me really famous on, on, on the, the set? crew because yeah, because everybody was like, "Oh, wait, you were fucking this lady from the transport department the other day, and you were kissing with Pedro Pascal." You're kissing with Pedro Pascal? <laughs> yeah. Is that public information? Like a, uh, I don't know. I don't think I should say. That. That's fine. <laughs> If you're listening, Pedro, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was cool. He was a cool guy, Pedro. Uh, interesting. I didn't I know he was, he was playing. Uh, I mean, maybe he's like just general, generally like open. I think he's open about his sexuality. Right. Okay, cool. Yeah. 45 years old. He's not that old. It's, oh, he's, and he's pretty, pretty hot. He's Chilean. He's Chilean. I was actually looking at that. I didn't know he was Chilean. Okay, interesting. Because like, again, as you mentioned, like they all kind of get qualified as Latinos, right? Yes, but right. he's much more, more than Latino. I think he studied in New York theater. Right, okay. It's pretty, look, even, even in the shittiest movies that you see, actors are talented. Mm. The problem with the performances that you see and that people always tend to shit on when you mm -hmm. see a movie it's not the actor, but it's usually what the director wants. Right, right, right. The plot, the script. Sometimes actors do get a take where right. they do an amazing performance, but then the director has final cut or the studios have final cut and then right. they butcher the, the performance. Like the, the Jack Snyder, uh, you know, basically they were saying the, 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 you know, the Justice League thing. Oh, yeah, the Snyder Cut. The Snyder Cut. Famous, right? yeah, yeah, they're saying, like, Snyder Cut is the one that was supposed to come out. You guys changed direction, fucked up the whole Justice League movie. We'll see what happens, because they, they were saying they're going to release it on HBO Max. Oh, uh, well. So, Travis, I, 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 I'm, I'm working on a project here in Germany, and like a Hollywood project, and some of the people in my office, I'm in the visual effects department. Okay, okay. Now. Some of the people in my office have worked in things like Episode 9. Okay. And, and there's this thing right now about episode nine that it would have been better if Colin Terrible, like the former director that was right. supposed to direct that movie. Wait, wait, what is episode nine? Episode nine is the movie with Vin Diesel? Or what is this? No, episode, episode nine is uh, Star Wars. Oh, okay, episode okay, nine. the Star Wars. Yeah, yeah, I have To be honest, I haven't even seen the last Star Wars. That's how much I've lost interest in the, in the franchise. You've done good, man. Like Cause, that movie is great for the special effects, but there's no plot. It's like they butcher that movie. I, I don't know. And then you see all the people that work on those films. And right. I, I mean, don't, the I don't start movements and stuff. I just, you know, it's a series of decisions. It's like people taking choices at the end. Of the oh day. shit! Rotten Tomatoes, fifty-two percent. That is not a good way yeah. to end the uh, fucking, uh, you know, series. Not bueno. Especially, especially with a franchise like Star Wars, where things like The Mandalorian mm -hmm. start to get like critical reception better yeah, yeah, yeah. than the action movies. Yeah, and even like The Clone Wars, which is like a like a like a <laughs> like an animation right, right, right. for kids, 
has right. more backstory than the prequels or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I think I they're know. kind of like, I don't know, they're kind of like, I'm not, I don't really know too much about movies, but I think at the end of the day, they've kind of gotten to this mindset where they just get more out of it there. Let's, you know, like do, uh, let's cater to everybody and basically uh, not upset anybody as well, right? Because, you know, Disney is now a family company, right? So they want to make it completely family friendly. So there's going to be a lot less decapitations, a lot of less, you know, a lot less amputation of arms, you know. But that's entertainment in this era, right? Like we were talking about this the other mm. day when I was trying to run that bit that I, that I got right. from watching the news. Like we're in this moment in culture where, you, where I, as a performer, uh, as an entertainer, have to ask myself the question, am I going to piss people off with this? Which really sucks sometimes, right. you know? But at the same time, it, uh, what, I, what I've realized with those subjects is that uh, they test my, like, like when I see some resistance, I'm like, no, I really want to talk about mm. this. What I realize is like, all right, is that my resistance to change? And I now know that change is important. Or is this like valid that I'm asking myself, all right, people are going to get pissed if I say this. I mean, thing right now. I mean, I was just listening to a podcast with Daniel Sloss about it, and he was saying kind of a similar thing because basically he has this whole bit about Christianity and upsets a lot of Christian people. And they were saying he was saying that you know upsetting people is actually a good way to filter who your audience is, because the ones that are not going to get offended are going to be the one that you know going to be listening. And because he was saying basically he did this uh, religious joke in uh, uh, what the fucking what was it uh, anyway the state in, uh, in in the U.S. and you know out of a hundred people, forty got up and left. Uh, but the other 60 that were in the room, they were like, you know, excited that Ford people got up and left, <laughs> you know, they were like, oh, this is cool. I, you know, now I have a story and then I'm part of this, you know, moment where people kind of left off. So it's like, you know, you filter the audience that wants to listen to you. So the ones that kind of stay are the ones that are interested in the stuff that you want. Now, the question is, uh, you know, if I think the problem arises when the people that are staying in the room are like bigoted homophobes or like, you know, right wing uh, people, that's I think that's maybe where the issue is, which was one of one of the, one of the, the debates about like Louis C.K.'s audience. They're saying like you know now that Louis C.K. is this uh, notorious masturbator, obviously like sexist right wing men are more into him. Uh, so again, the question is: Is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? Uh, I think at the end of the day, you have to kind of say what you know what what you feel and what makes you kind of you know gets gets you have, you have to like not play too much to the audience. And this is, uh, we're talking about the, you know, you're doing the, the maps joke. Was that the one you're talking about? I want to do, I want to do a parenthesis on that. Yeah. We'll, we'll get back to the maps. But uh, now that we mentioned Louis C.K., like, for instance, I've been revisiting the catalog of one of my favorite comedians of all time, which is Patton Oswalt. Right. Patton Oswalt, Patton Oswalt talks about people having children in his uh, feeling kind of Patton special. Right. In two, in, I think that's, 2001, 2002. Okay. And then he has a transition when he has a girlfriend and he talks about the dangers for a comedian to have a girlfriend and like Patton. Uh, oh, and then he talks about having, uh, about being tricked into having children by his, by his girlfriend. And then he talks about his girlfriend being pregnant. And then he mm -hmm. talks about having children. And then he talks about his wife died. Like, right. He's been, having a progression about a subject. He's going from, right. like, I'm against it to like, eh, ha, 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 ha. like it. his frame of mind has changed. Right. Whereas when I see somebody like Louis C.K. or mm -hmm. Bill Burr, mm -hmm. it's like opinions set in stone, right, right, right. In stone and jokes written from a perspective. It's like, this is my beliefs. This is what makes me like Louis C.K. has a bit that says like, this is my belief is my belief is I, I feel my belief is yeah. <laughs> My belief is, you know, yeah, yeah. And, and, and that's, and, and you can just like transpose that to Evelyn. He comes like this slave from the beginning to the end. Mm. And I think I want to be more like the kind of comedian that if I say something today, I want to be able to change my mind at some point. Oh, yeah. I mean, obviously, you don't want to kind of put yourself in the box where this is how I think. Uh, yeah, I guess, yeah, I'm not sure with regards, like, I like Pat Oswalt's Annihilation, you know, I think he has one of my favorite jokes there, the one about the Polish, uh, you know, the Polish Lady of Doom. 
Oh, little girl. <laughs> little girl, little no, ne- <laughs> I never recover. <laughs> That's such is one of my favorite jokes because it's such a funny because he has the Eastern European level of like uh, He's cynicism. Talking about his dead yeah. wife and how he deals with that with his daughter, man. It's like, oh my god. And yeah, it's. I f- he walks a he walks a beautiful thin line, uh, in jokes like. Uh, uh, I think in his previous special, he tells the jokes about a black guy. And when he says black guy, the audience just like dies. Right, right, right. And, you, and you hear him just saying that joke to silence. Right. And then coming with a punchline. Right. Just kind and funny. And it's like, ah, see, you were just nervous because I say black guy. Right, right, right. right. He diffuses tension. tension. But, yeah, because even if you say black guy. All right, so uh, going back to the maps. Uh, yeah, um, I read on the news on like the queer circles mm-hmm. that there's this group of people who already created a flag and are lobbying to be included into the LGBTQI plus right. community. Wait, what does the I stand for? Uh, intersexual. Inter, what's an intersexual? intersexual? Intersexual is somebody who uh, at birth shows uh, both uh, genitals. Ah, okay, okay. So they have both. Okay. Call, it's what people used to call hermaphrodite. Right, okay. Intersexual is like somebody who goes between. Right, so, so, is, so is hermaphrodite like, a, like is it like a derogatory term now? Is it? It's a derogatory term. Gotcha, okay. Gotcha, okay. Yeah, so did inter- not know about that. Intersexual. Yeah, intersexual, okay. <laughs> So, um, and these people are called MAPS, Mm -hmm. and MAPS stands for uh, Minor Attracted Persons. Okay. Commonly known as? Pedophiles. Pedophiles. Okay. Yeah. Which I think is even wrong uh, grammatically, because if you say Minor Attracted Person, it's... uh, it sounds like it's the minor who is attracted to the right, person. Right, 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 right. When it's the person who is attracted to the minor, right. So I, um, I'm, I'm advocating for a change to Pam. Right, Pam. Okay. So we, know, <laughs> so right. we don't feel like oh, but but you know they they put the work into creating this acronym and this they put flag. The work. Right. <laughs> you know, and we're talking about. The Flag, yeah. yeah. We're talking about the flag. That yeah. I, that I'm amazed that the flag is not just like a yellow ba- van, right? With like <laughs> a, a pair of a child's leg hanging on the side or something like predatory, like what it really is. And I didn't know. Like I was talking to another friend about this, and she told me, like, well, that's easy. Like if you wanna just like shut them down on the conversation, just bring consent up. Right. No child can give, can give consent, no matter right. how much people say, like, oh, no, right. he wanted to try sex right. with, with the adult. Yeah. 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 Like, there's not, a, not an excuse. I mean, what, what if they are age of consent, like 16? Like, for example, some countries have age of consent as 14. Like, Japan has age of consent 14. You know what the age of consent is for, right? It's to avoid things like what happened in the United States, where 16 years old, year old uh, people mm-hmm. go to jail right. because they were having sex outside of wedlock. Right. So parents just go like, hey, this motherfucker from mm-hmm. high school mm-hmm. fucked my, 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 my daughter. Where that's like exploratory sex mm-hmm. between 15-year-olds, mm-hmm. year old, which is right. something that uh, shaped my sexuality in Colombia, mm-hmm. which was mm-hmm. like we... 12, 13, 14 years old right. on ourselves, just giving each other hand jobs and doing Play things. But we were kids right, playing right. with kids. Right, right, right. It was like a discovery thing. There were no adults around going like, oh, all right, we're going to supervise this and just uh, quietly master. Yeah, that's going to say, that's a bit weird. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we're going to watch these kids fuck and uh, oh, jerk in a corner. Yeah. Oh, was... yeah, so age of consent is just like uh, the right. term for that. But there's like, there's like rules that apply. Right. Like if you are an adult and you get consent from a 16 year old mm-hmm. to have sex with you, mm-hmm. that does not count. It's still statutory rape. Right. 
because you might have coerced a minor into having sex with you. Right, right, right. So whenever I hear somebody go like, hey, but you know, age of consent is 14 here. It's like, mm, that's five to 10. Right, 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 <laughs> okay. So let's get, let's, to 10 years. let's get back to the map. So basically they want to join the LGBTQI movement. Plus, is there a plus in there? Yeah. Okay, plus. It's just uh, might be more people. So they right. want to be part of the plus. Right, right, right. Which, makes me uh, quiver because, all right, um, some people in the queer community are referring to this the same way that Christians were referring to homosexuals. Right. Which Basically shutting down, no conversation, conversation, you know, like unnatural. Not only that, not only that but they're using a thing that is like, oh, what are we going to accept the sophiliates mm. next? Oh, right, 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 right. Which, which the, you can like compare the, to the argument of same-sex marriage like oh if right. you let them marry what's next are you going to marry your horse or something right, right, right so the slippery slope kind of phase all right it's not a slippery slope in the sense that oh we're gonna we can we as a queer community i know how hard uh, we have fought to achieve this status that we have right now right but we have also uh responsibility with ourselves to remain calm and cold-headed in this right. situation is my opinion uh i'm not gonna enforce it around mm -hmm. so my thing was like okay how am i gonna shut down these conversations without being like fuck these people for mm -hmm. because the other thing that i know is that uh this is also um this is also an neuropathy like um pedophilia is something that some people cannot control right and the study that some people are um, showing in order to like justify this lobbying for this uh, group of individuals to come into the LGBTQI community is that there are people that act upon those impulses and people that don't act. And the people that don't act have uh, the use of age play, which is like a bondage and kink established game okay. like two consenting adults get together and they start playing age play like, so, wait, so is there age play does the age play what's the exactly the age play they can do any type of role play so like is, age play is age play is a, a consenting adult with another consenting adult okay who act like children Ah, I see. Okay. They both act like children or one of them acts like a children? <clears throat> one of them act, uh, acts like children. Um, is this one like, like a, with, is this the, like the when a girl says, me, daddy smack me or something? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. When that, when, when that is discussed, like, well, let me tell you something. If mm -hmm. somebody comes, goes to bed with you and right. they start to call you daddy mm -hmm. in the middle of sex, uh, be aware this person has issues. Right. Um, <laughs> Uh, this is this is a consent talk. This mm -hmm. is something that you should mm -hmm. talk before you have sex. Like mm -hmm. if you find it hot that somebody calls you daddy without mm -hmm. your consent, mm -hmm. be aware of that. Like that's the thing about BDSM and kink play for me. The kink play and BDSM allows you to treat like some uh, issues that you might have, like some trauma and shit, mm -hmm. in a control environment, and allows you to recuperate your power over sexual se se certain sexual trauma right, right right like people who like to be uh, bound or hang mm -hmm. sometimes have to work on issues of, of like mammy issues or right uh, it's just people who want to remember that coziness that they felt uh, being in a, in a baby Bjorn or something like mm -hmm. that people that are, can go that back to trace their their pleasure right so people like to spank is people that remember that once uh, they were in school and the teacher spanked them and then they so, felt like a satisfaction and they felt shame ever since that but then now they try it in an environment that is controlled so so basically feel, okay so they like, really regain power of it exactly not okay. feel shame right about it. it's okay. to do not have okay. sex just right. because a nun scream at them right 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 Okay, so like this level of kinky sexual manifestation is actually an after effect of like some form of childhood or like early life trauma. Exactly. Okay. But, you know, in a controlled space, in a place where you can actually like uh, profit emotionally from right. and just bring 
Like that's that's how I understand, and that's why I appreciate the BDSM culture. Right. Okay. Oh, that's pretty interesting. I never thought about it that way, but that's an interesting insight. Just because of the communication level right, that we right, have, right. and just because of the therapeutic thing that therapeutic mm-hmm. thing that it brings to my own sexual sphere. Right. But then so again, what, it wait, wait, so wait, let me, a lot of people. Let me make a quick a pause there. So what is what is the uh, so for example glory holes? What is that? Do you have any idea what is that trying to resolve? It's the is anonymity that, of it. Okay, and just uh, I mean the sexual repression. Yes. And again, shame oriented. Uh, you don't want to be uh, judged by the person, or you just want a transaction. Okay. Okay. Like transaction. Okay. I, for instance, when I, I used to have in Colombia a fetish with the sex worker. Okay. Like I used to like to pay mm-hmm. to have somebody just come to my house or just go mm-hmm. to somewhere and just have that sex as a transaction. Right. That was it. And sexual workers helped me a lot when I was in, in my depression mm-hmm. after my divorce mm-hmm. because I didn't feel like going to a bar or right, right, right. swiping on Tinder and right. filling somebody with bullshit just so they could like, mm-hmm. at the end of the day, it wasn't just like having sex, but it was like, hug me or mm-hmm. talk to me right, right, while right. I was naked. Right. And sometimes I couldn't expect that like, like I couldn't like wait for that to happen in a Tinder day. Right, 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 right. So I would rather just like pay somebody and go like, we don't have to fuck, mm-hmm. but I do need that you hug me. Right, okay. I think you were my girlfriend or something like that. Mm, okay, interesting. Yeah. So uh, I wanted to go to the map. I wanted to connect that to the yeah, map. Yeah, yeah. But, but the thing is that um, if you open a space like Pride, for instance, where you can just like go out, and a lot of people in the queer community have been like prey mm. or victims from, a lot, from pedophiles. From maps. And you have... Yes, and mm. you have to share your space with your predator. Right, okay. I can understand where all the... Animosity is coming from. And, and right, animosity right. is coming right, right. from. Um, and, I mean, it's a, it's a polarized society. And uh, like my partner told me the other day, look, you're going to have these fights where you're going to get this triumphs and at the mm. end of your triumphs somebody's gonna get gonna try to ride on your victory right to to sour your grapes yeah yeah, yeah. so the challenge is just to stay like all right i was gonna but, say you know you know what could be a funny uh, tag to your joke like about the maps is like why do they why do they want to join our parade can they just have their parades have they been having it for the past couple of years in the catholic church you know call it sermon <laughs> and call it sermons or whatever call it eastern yeah, call it Easter, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Jesus has risen, you know, the resurrection. Hide your kids. Yeah. You don't see a lot of children, like, you know, you don't see a lot of children. So, so effectively, they want to basically attach the flag to the gay parade, the pride parade, and be like, hey, guys, we're also here. They want to be part of the LGBTQI community. And the question of many people is like, so what are we going to have uh, after the parade? Uh, are we going to have to lock all the children? Or is the parade going to end in a park? Right. Um, you know, but then, but then, w- while we were working on this, we, were, we came across the conclusion that, well, you know, it's this is this is something that should be like linked to the people like coprophagia and uh, zoophilia, yeah, zoophilia and necrophilia. Necro, yeah, yeah. So, but then I realized that it's be- that because of the co consent thing, like people who are into acts that are non-consensual should form their own like, mm. acronym, like pedophiles, necrophiliacs, sophilics, and of course, rapists. Bill Cosby. <laughs> <laughs> That's your joke right there, yeah? <laughs> I don't have a paper here, but I should write that down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, I think, you know, you, I think you might be onto something, so basically. I say that, mm-hmm. the kids yeah, I, I hope so. But I, this is something that I want to talk about because mm-hmm. the stage is the main place that I have to deal with all these new Rosses and shit that I get from. So then you would also add Jackson. Michael Jackson to this non-consensual group. Michael Jackson is dead and he was a pedophile. So he 
belongs in two groups. Maps, the okay. Necrophiliac, mm. Yeah, necrophiliacs and the maps. Right, okay. Yeah. Interesting. I mean, the I way, think that, that might be a good differentiation to make, actually, non, people that are just in the non-consensual sex. No, but I guess that then rapists are going to have to change the name from rapists to um, non-consensual sex fanatics or uh, <laughs> sophiliacs. Are non-consensual to... sex fanatics, that is... <laughs> you know, this is this is actually I think this is going to work very funny I think this is going to it's a very interesting topic that you know because there's so much uh, you know basically at the moment like pedophiles when you look at like you know prison sentences whatever like or like even like child pornography online it's considered like you know lower than the lowest right like for example they get murdered yeah. in prison right they get raped and that murder like Jeffrey Epstein oh, yeah, well, but, he didn't get raped I get that I guess that the privilege that you get for being like a rich you only get <laughs> murdered yeah we could, we're gonna make it look like an accident but I was gonna say but, so for example but is there any like you, are you aware of any form of uh, I don't know like uh, academic classification is pedophilia like a mental disease is it like what is it is it just like well, can it be treated or what exactly is pedophilia well um, this is empiric. This is mainly empiric. When I was married, uh, like on month two of my marriage, we started to go to couples therapy just oh. to justify uh, the <laughs> divorce right now. I was going to say it's a strong start into the marriage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was like, it was like week three and we decided, Oh, you know what? We should go to couples therapy. So okay. Right there. I'm divorced. Right. Um, <laughs> and, uh, the person who was our therapist, was also a therapist for um, for pedophiles. Okay. And so my wife and I will be in a very tense state waiting on a <laughs> Bro, on this, a is, a, room. this is a joke right there. <laughs> we, we will be like sitting there in this, uh, in this uh, waiting room with this literature about couples therapy and mm -hmm. living with pedophilia. And you will be like <laughs> in front of a poster of a guy on a bus with something like in the background on like an out of focus clearly small figure and this guy in the frame in the, in the like in the foreground right just like either sweating or just controlling himself right. and, and then the caption was like leaving it one day at a time just don't do it <laughs> yeah pedophilia don't do it so you know, you know, you know why I'm, I'm telling you this because mm -hmm. this might sound like a Rick and Morty thing. Right, right. Because in Rick and Morty, there was like uh, Morty's family waiting for a family therapy, and the therapist moonlighted as a person who treated people who uh, like to eat shit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, but this happened to me and. I talked to the therapist and I went like, so uh, those posters out there, just trying to make like funny banter. And she's like, oh yeah, this is a problem. And I treat people here. I cannot tell you more about that because right. of confidentiality right, and stuff. Right. And I was like, oh, so you treat pedophiles and dysfunctional marriages. Great. I mean, you cover the whole cap. I mean, well, he, he, and he'd be like, you know, pedophile can be cured. Dysfunctional marriage, I can't cure that. No, you guys no. are gonna have to get a divorce. I got another. Yeah. I got another tag for you. So basically, you know how like the Nike uh, uh, model is just do it, uh, and they have the swoosh. Maybe the pedophile logo could be a reverse swoosh. I mean, like just don't do it. Yeah, just like like two swoosh. Like, yeah, yeah. Don't. Don't, don't do it. Yeah, don't do it. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting because like again, if it's just like a, you know, is it a mental kind of like is it like a childhood trauma? It's a compulsion. Okay. It's a compulsion. But like it's masturbation compulsion. is a compulsion. Hmm. It's more like an, it's what, that's what the church tries to tell you, but uh, masturbation is just like. Physical uh, requirement, necessity? No, it's not, in the, it's not even a requirement. It's like a pleasure is. But it does, right. And, but, it's therapeutic, you know? But then, yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. It releases like different kind of like, uh, what? Uh, Endorphin. what I the endorphins that, you know, regulate uh, mental health, right? And like different kind of body functions and increases your immune system. So it is like a physical uh, requirement, right? Like just, just like coming is a physical can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so coming is a physical, uh, a physiological need, right? Yes, it's in the it's it's in the uh, lizard brain because it's yeah. the uh, the need to procreate. Reptile you know, brain, to, uh, yeah. Pro 
Whereas, yeah, like, yeah, I yeah. think, like, the, you know, the kinky stuff is not necessarily a physio- physiological need. It's more of a psychological need, right? Right. It's frontal lobe. That's yeah. social interactions. So then the question is, is, the question is, pedophilia, is it, like, smaller brain or? Oh, that's a good question. I didn't, I didn't see it like that. I just, uh, I don't, I'm not a, I'm not a big pedophilia fan. Yeah. And I, <laughs> I mean, I'm not, it's not. I do know, I do know that, that people compare it to serial killers okay you know how serial killers have this uh, this need this desire mm-hmm. this like right. oh this compulsion to like the next victim and the next victim right the next victim. interesting some, some kind of control and to feel powerful and right. like every kind of like sexual predator is a power thing right it's like but- but uh, I like the topic of like, I, I think I'm, I'm looking forward to see how these jokes evolve because I think it's a very interesting kind of topic that, you know, it's, people don't talk about. And I, I personally wasn't aware of it until you mentioned it. So yeah, I'd be interested to kind of, you know, I, you know, actually last night before I went to bed, you know what my last thought was? Because uh, I was just, I was, I'm going to take, I, I kind of took this approach. I'm going to leave the phone. Or, I'm going to just sit before I go to bed. I just stop screens. Like I started doing this yesterday. Right. So for example, I'm right. not going to, I'm not going to look at my screen. So 30 minutes, I'm just going to sit in the bed and see what happens. Uh, so I started thinking of like Mars and like I, I'm, I've been trying to do some more jokes about the future and looking at the future, how the future is going to be look like. And I was trying to do a joke about like, you know, I'm doing a lot of YouTube stuff and I'm putting a lot of me recorded online. So in the future, you know, uh, algorithm can build a, can build a, a basically a, a virtual assistant with my personality for my children or my grandkids. Right. And then, you know, roll into that, you know, I'm into space and I'm hitting a meteorite. And what we should, what should we do? Grandpa? Well, have you tried a potato? You know? And kind of like try to suggest, yeah. Have you tried hitting it? Have you tried smacking it? Yeah. Anyway, so just kind of, I was working that on jokes, and I kind of came up across the idea of like, because uh, I was trying to think How of how many lines per minute is it coming to you? Uh? Exactly, exactly, exactly. Uh, What's and then, the LPM? I, and then I was thinking, I was thinking of uh, sex work because you know Romania is like the has the largest uh, video cam population in the world, right? Bucharest. So I was thinking, oh, I wonder, you know. When we go to Mars, they're probably going to document every first thing, right? So you're probably going to have the first biologist on Mars, the first, like, you know, mechanic, the first prostitute. <laughs> you know? Where are they going to be, they gonna be from? Where yeah, so, I, so I, no, yeah, <laughs> that's a good one. So I was asking myself, like, how would, you know, how would that story unfold? Does she go there and become a prostitute because she, you know, she's not really good at growing vegetables? First of all, first of all, it's going to be really important, Romania, as the main hub for cam uh, girls in the world, because uh, when you're traveling in space, you don't have a lot of time to have sex, but you do have time to masturbate. And yeah. thank you for your service, Romania. For so actually, so what, what I wanted to take that was like, or in the future, we won't refer to them as prostitutes. And we are actively going to uh, export sex workers to Mars. Dragos, welcome to the future. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. I was speaking like, welcome to the future, you know? <laughs> they don't talk a lot about the, the prostitutes in Star Trek, you know? <laughs> or are there going to be robot prostitutes or robot sex machines that are going to fulfill all these needs? So, so you're from Romania, so you probably hang around a lot of uh, Romanian women. Are Not Romanian at all, actually. Women... <laughs> Uh, are Romanian women very understanding so that they like practice a kind of therapeutic sex work or it's not your experience with Romanian women? Because I can tell you my experience with Colombian women. Colombian women are uh, very therapeutic, but with uh, men that are not Colombian. Okay. And men that are not men <laughs> right. from Colombia. Uh, to be honest, but I don't really... Women. Yeah, they, they, pro- they provide all about the, as, well as, a, as an industry, you mean? Mm-hmm. I mean, to be honest, I don't even know because I haven't been in Romania that much. Like, I think, you know, to be honest, like all this kind of stigma of Romanian prostitutes is not in Romania. They're in, in Germany, in Amsterdam, you know, like the sex workers, they're not in, in Romania doing sex works, you know, because they can't, you can't even make any money in Romania with sex work, you know. You only stay in Romania if you have no because, other, you know, if you want to make money with sex right. work, you go somewhere else. Uh, and where it's also a bit more respected, but I, I'm not sure if it, how it is in Romania, but I know there is a lot of video well, chat. Women, women, women. If it, if, if it, is it like a profession that is respected there? No, right? No, 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 no. That's what I'm saying. There's a massive stigma. So I was going to say like, I mean, is, is it respected anywhere as a profession? Well, in Austria, in Switzerland, 
is respected. Like I think in Sweden, you can like if you are single, I'm not sure. I have to check with my stepdad again. Uh, but if you're single and you put that in your taxes, I think mm-hmm. that they deduct it as like mm-hmm. sex expenses or something like that. I'm not, right. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that one. I mean, I, I know it's more normalized in Amsterdam because uh, just the, 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 the prolificity, prolificity, how prolific this, uh, the, you know, the red light district is there. But I, I think it's just like a humanitarian thing. It's one of the oldest professions in the world. I and mean, mm. it's one of the most therapeutic sec- like professions in the world. Like it, mm. it's something that everybody needs. You need contact. You need human contact, mm. not just sex, but you need to be like close to somebody. And they allow that to people mm. who socially are it's, awkward. Mm. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a value. They provide, they add value, right? Because I was thinking, like, but, I, but a lot of times the, you know, the, the stigma associated with, uh, let's say, prostitution or sex work is because uh, sometimes there's a lot of women sex trafficking. That's where it comes in, right? So, for example, that's All where right, the... That's where the issue is because sometimes yeah. a lot of people, if you know, if you willingly go into this profession by yourself, that's cool. But then there's situations where basically they get women from like uh, Romania, they put them in like these places and they're basically kind of held captive there, right? Or they are like, they, they get Joe Exotic, you know, they have no other option. I'm not, but the, yeah. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna jump into that subject because that's a tough one, a yeah. very tricky subject. And I have a lot of sex worker friends who yeah. will disagree with you. And they will tell you that that's like a story that <clears throat> Christian politicians use to justify their battle to like cut down stop the cash. Yeah, some yeah. people some people earn a lot of money. Like for instance, right now, um, remember we're talking about Reddit and uh, Reddit porn and stuff. Right, right, right. It seems to me like every time that I go to Reddit and I and I watch uh, nudes on Reddit. Like every second person that posts on the subreddit Gone Wild has an OnlyFans account. Mm. And what OnlyFans allows is, uh, oh, you like my nudes? You like my nudes? Well, there's more where that came from. You know, I do requests. But yeah, exactly. But yeah. just give me some money for it. And yeah. then uh, I've read like the comments on the subreddit and it's just people who want, like, it's just guys who think that their dicks gives them the right Mm. to get pussy for free or to get pussy pics for free or to right. get like nudes for free and it's like oh you're already a whore so why don't you just give give it for free right and man i do see the point of having tits and being the center of attention and mm-hmm. just going like you know what if you're gonna look might as well pay me yeah, yeah, yeah. Cash, cash is not hard it's not easy to come by right right, right. nowadays all of us are prostitutes. If you mm. think, if you think about it, we just pander to different kind of jobs. I mean, it's true. You know? It's true. You know, everybody's selling something. So that's why I think like it's. I, that's, I was thinking maybe I should kind of run with that joke and kind of go towards like this idea of like in the future yeah. it's not gonna be a prostitution work. It's gonna be a sex work. It's gonna be legit work. We need to export more because like, you know, Martians need to fuck. By the way, I I I bet that like viewers are just like pouring off. This conversation right now. Bro, I, Welcome to how jokes are born. I mean, I, I, I it's not necessarily a joke because again, it's uh, I, I was listening to the Lenny Bruce uh, Chronicles on podcast the other day, and it was about talking about things that are you know normally you know they were talking about how his speech had like social importance in the in in that era, right? About like the uh, anti uh, what was the anti vulgarity or was it anti something? Uh, the, the profanity, anti- profanity, profanity yeah, yeah. anti profanity laws, right? And uh, basically, yeah, yeah. how, like, you know, it was, con- talk, yeah, yeah, how it was, con- I, was contra- yeah. I was contradicting the First Amendment because, like, you, you have the right to say anything you want, but then, like, the fuck, right? So, then in this situation as well, I think it's important to kind of address it, you know, as a joke, but you're taking a very serious topic, like, let's say, maps. Uh, this is a very serious topic, you know, there's so much hate going towards like pedophiles. What if it's a legit mental condition? Well, the other part is that I. I really want to start talking about um, having a family mm-hmm. as the kind of like per people like me as. Sorry, uh, can you repeat the uh, for a second? My partner is not binary. Uh, assigned female at birth. Okay. What's up? Uh, can you repeat again? Because like the connection kind of. Uh, oh, yeah. All right. 
So my partner is non-binary. Mm -hmm. uh, it's assi assigned female at birth, but identifies it neither man nor fe uh, nor female. Okay. And we, we want to have a we want to have a we want to have chi children. You know, mm -hmm. we want to have a family. We want to mm -hmm. build something together. But we're also polyamory, so we have like relationships outside of our relationship. Okay. That doesn't that doesn't like diminish the fact that we want to build our own little nest. Right, right, right. right. And I want to talk about that. I want to talk right. about raising a family with uh, <laughs> my trauma as a Christian brought up. Right, right. With my frame of mind and uh, just. Uh, like I told you, like I have a joke that uh, my, my biggest fear as a parent is going to be that I'm going to do the same thing that my mother did with me. Right. Um, but I'm going to do it in, 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 in my cultural sense, right. which would be like, wait, so you're coming home with only one person. Uh, <laughs> you're not going to your room and locking yourself unless there's four of you. Or four. Right, right, right. If there's another gangbang here every Saturday, then I've, I'm, I've failed as a parent. <laughs> exactly. Or, or, hey, how can you be masturbating in your room if your butt plug is in the kitchen? Right, right, right. The butt plug that I gave you. Right. Or that For I Christmas. Kind of <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's that why you're shaped like a Christmas tree. Exactly. Yeah. That I'm going to be that kind of parent. As right, well. right, right. Those are the subjects that I want to speak about on stage mm. because those are like my, my fears in my head. Right. That I really want to just like, Imagine you're like, your kid ends up being like completely conservative. You're like trying to be the opposite, right? And I'm like trying to like keep it gender neutral with my kid and my kid yeah. going like, why can't you call me son? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, oh yeah. What do you, what do you, what do you, I'm sorry. what do you call a gender neutral kid? You call him, hey, buddy. <laughs> child. Child, yeah. Child. Child. Yeah, child. child. Okay. Yeah. Offspring. I don't know. Hi there, yeah. offspring. You can see you can use offspring. Hi there, offspring. Good morning, offspring. <laughs> That's a, that could be it. About, Go ahead. If we think about things like uh, gender neutral names and things like that, you know, and uh, I just wanna I just wanna raise healthy humans and humans that have a lot of love, right? Not like brainwash humans. Right. right, right. Yeah, I, I, have to, I mean, I brainwash. But again, I you have like to. I think that. the easiest way to like not brainwash somebody is just kind of expose them to a lot of stuff and make let them make their own decisions, right? Yeah, I think I, I I'm 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 pretty lucky that my partner is with me mm -hmm. because my partner didn't grow up in a in a Christian uh, constrictive mm -hmm. environment, so they're they're pretty good at that and they're pretty good at calling my bullshit. Like this is just gonna be you, and this is just a bit because this right. is something that is not gonna happen to our children. Right, right, right. I know that. Like, yeah, I'm yeah. here as well. Right, right, right. Like, you know, yes, we're going to find gender neutral names. And if our child wants to change their gender or something like that, we're going to be very mm -hmm. supportive. Right. No cramming down our bullshit. But what if, what if your child wants to marry a robot? Oh, my God. You know, <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't work as a barista in berlin for four years to support my ketamine habit just so my child can marry a, ro a robot yeah i fight robots yeah. or nothing yeah. like that robot better have five dicks you know yeah. no and I, I remember coming home with tattoos and my mom going like oh my god you're gonna kill me and stuff like that classic i can imagine my child just coming with like an extra arm or like yeah a, a chip a microchip spider, a bionic arm yeah. like, like, like spider legs or something like that so, yeah. so i remove my legs and i change them for robotic spider legs like, yeah what the fuck no, you're <laughs> killing me you're killing me <laughs> ah. How do you poop? Yeah, no, we, <laughs> no. This, 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 this impression that everything yeah. is cyclic, is cyclical, and that you make the same mistakes that your parents. I, I, I don't want to. I mean, I, 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 I think the best way to go about it is not to not to overthink it. You know, uh, not over. You know, first step one: make babies, then kind of worry about it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I think we're kind of we're kind of one hour and a yeah, half into it, man. Uh, should we wrap it up for now? Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. So okay. I, I was going to say, I think we're, we're one.
No worries, man. Thanks for it. I was, this is very informative. I think we're definitely going to do a part two once we kind of have more uh, clarity and once we come back to the stage and see how the material works. Uh, oh, yeah. Let me, before I go, I kind of wanted to run some stuff by you before. Uh, I was, you know, I was, was talking to you about like also approaching like a more difficult topic, which is the homeless people. Because uh, yeah. there's a lot of homeless people here and, you know, you can't really call them a problem because it's not okay. Uh, but it kind of is a problem for them because they're homeless, right? Uh, yeah. So I was thinking of like, you know, I kind of, <laughs> it's not a problem for me, but it's a problem for them. Uh, so I was thinking of like running a, an, uh, like a scenario of like, you know, we got to come up with some solutions to address their, you know, non, uh, non address situation. Uh, so, you know, we got to reintroduce them into society somehow. So I was thinking about, you know, if in order to reintroduce them into society, they need to be productive, right? They need to create some form of value. So I was thinking, you know, why don't we, where, which, where, where can they add value? So I was thinking, okay, why don't we kind of like all pitch in, give them all one pitch every, every Monday we give like one homeless person. 10,000 peaches and then he can resell those peaches and have a business, right? So for those of the, that for the ones that are, you know, mentally stable, just need a business to kind of get back into the market. They become peach sellers or plum, whatever fruit of your own decision is. But the ones oh, they that- They peach wine together and then they sell peach wine. And they exactly, they start, they become peach entrepreneurs. Uh, exactly. But then I was thinking for the ones that are not mentally stable, why, we, why don't we do the same thing we do with all our mentally unstable people? Why don't we put them in entertainment? You know, <laughs> so then we start. Kind I like of, that. Yeah, why don't we do something like you know along the lines of reality TV? You know, we do a Big Brother, and then you know we have okay. all these all these people, and then we vote in one of these mentally unstable homeless people on the show, and then. Oh, Dragos! Dragos, you have it right there. You have it right there. You just do an open mic or give them a podcast. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, give them a podcast, you know. But I was thinking, like, you get all these like self-obsessed, you know, uh, very vain and superficial people in the black in the Big Brother rooms, anyway, or like Love Island, whatever. And we just randomly add, vote in one of these unstable mental uh, mental homeless people into the show, and then don't tell the people that they're uh, mentally unstable. See how that unwinds, you know. So I was thinking, use that an idea. You know, do you know what will be the? You know what I like about it is that you are not saying like. Why don't we do it for them? It's just like, no, no, no. Let them do it for themselves. Just like give them, give them a few options. Tell them like, hey, you know what? There's a lot of people like you, even crazier, who are making a lot, a lot of money. money. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't know. Open micers. Yeah, exactly. I think, I think open micers might be a bit too meta, but I guess, uh, yeah, you can. Oh, fuck. Connection. Can you still hear me? I can hear you. Yeah, but the idea is kind of give them, or like you put them in, into office, you know, like we got one mentally <laughs> unstable person as, as the president. Get a couple more in there, you know? You make, it, you make, them, you make them pitch, uh, uh, what's it called, like uh, startups or something like that. Yeah, 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 exactly. You can just put them, you know, some of them pitch startups, some of them start writing, uh, you know, the last episode of Game of Thrones. Season of Game of Thrones. Yeah, exactly. Get them to write the last season. I'm pretty sure they'll do a better job than the previous guys. Oh my god. Yeah. So the point is, the point is not to kind of punch down on homeless people, but kind of address the situation and bring it into light. Right. That's kind of that was kind of where I was coming from. I think I think that's another one of the subjects that it is. It's a fine line, right? Has to be addressed. Uh, And at the moment, like. We talked about this the other day. I have a lot of respect for homeless people because as soon as the system breaks down, I'm going to go and get my, uh, my master class from a homeless person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they already know the street. They already know the system. They already know a broken system. Like we are the ones out here pretending like things are not the way that they right. are experiencing right now. Like uh, it's the condescending people that think that, well, they're homeless because they want to. It's like, no. Yeah, exactly. It's not. No, no. We, we are in a house because we comply with the system. Yeah. <laughs> they do not. Com- Hello? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, the connection, I think, I think the connection is telling us to wrap it up. Yeah. <laughs> they do not comply with the system, you know. Hello? I think. <laughs> connection. I think I think the connection is I think we're being yeah, yeah I think we're being censored I think so yeah yeah this is the system once you <laughs> mentioned the system the censorship came in eh? <laughs> 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 can you still assist me oh, what the fuck? 
Okay, let's wrap it up there then. <laughs> it broke down, bro. The system doesn't the system doesn't want you to talk about the system. <laughs> Okay. Oh my God, this is a great way to end it. All right. Okay, man. perfect. Thank man. Thanks for being on it, and I'll uh, catch you at the joke writing. Yeah. See you later. All right, man. Okay, bye. Bye. Okay, Roy. Opa. <laughs>